praising the Lord always. Praising the Lord always. Praising the Lord with all my heart. Praising the Lord with all my heart. Praising the Lord.
Second Corinthians chapter chapter one verse twenty one. Second Corinthians chapter one verse twenty one. It says, now, he which established us with you in Christ and had anointed us is God. Who had also, verse 22, sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this is very, very important scripture and everyone must must uh, come to understand it and everyone who is um, who has committed himself to serving it's important that you are familiar with this scripture now this is what Paul is saying Paul is saying all of us in Christ Jesus are anointed <coughs> hallelujah Amen. now he which has established us in Christ person who has brought us into faith, into this kingdom, who has established what we've got in Jesus, has also anointed us. And that person is God. Say, I am anointed. I am anointed. Every one of us is anointed. Whether you are serving in full-time ministry or not, you are anointed. The anointing of God is upon your life. Whether you are a pastor or a brother, whether you are a deacon, or, or a sister, uh, you are anointed. You don't have to be a reverend or a bishop to be an anointed person. Uh, in Christ Jesus, everyone is anointed. Say it again, I am anointed. I am anointed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, the fact that you have the Holy Spirit means that you have what it takes. You know, you have... To be anointed means to, to be given... The ability of God. You are empowered by God. You, you are enabled by God. That's simply what anointing means. Enabled by God to do some assignments for Him. To, to do certain work for Him. And for your own role, for the level of your calling, there is the anointing of God on your life to be able to do that. Hallelujah. Amen. Say with me one more time, I believe, I, believe. I, am, anointed. I am anointed. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Do you believe that? Yes, that you are anointed. <coughs> Do you believe the heavenly yeah. Are you anointed? Yeah. You are anointed. You are anointed. Hallelujah. I have the anointing of God, not because someone has put oil on me, but because God has anointed me. Amen. You don't have to have the oil put on you by anyone. Paul says, the one who established us and has anointed us together with you is God. God is the anointer. I tell you, if God is not anointing you, whoever puts oil on you is putting olive oil. It's just oil. It doesn't do anything. No one can anoint you. No one can empower you. Actually, God is the anointer. Uh, when someone put oil on you is simply confirming what God is doing in your life. Yes, Amen. Amen. Or he's standing by faith with you and, and he's saying, I'm putting this oil on this person, which is the type of the Holy Spirit or a symbol of the Holy Spirit so that God will anoint him. Are you with me? Yes, so each one of you in Christ Jesus is anointed. That's what the Bible says. He's anointed. 
God himself has anointed you. Whether you get to become a deacon or not, I say you are anointed. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, another word for the anointing is the grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. What did I say? Grace of God. Grace of God. The grace of God is another word for anointing. Grace simply means the enabling power of God put on someone or given to someone to enable him achieve what he cannot by his own power. The help of God working in someone to enable him become what God wants him to do. You know, uh, without without much, much sweat or toiling. And we know that the grace of God is given unto everyone according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Amen. Amen. Anyone that is assigned by God to do something is given grace or is anointed for that assignment. So wherever you feel, you know, moved by God, to serve, he supports you with grace. He gives you the anointing to serve there. In that place, you can be very successful. You can be very effective. You can be very impactful. Every one of us here who can identify his assignment or his, the role that he should play in church, or he feels moved by God to serve in any capacity, God supports him with grace or the anointing. And if all of us are fellow workers together with Jesus, then all of us have what it takes to be successful. Hallelujah. Amen. And you will from today be more successful Amen. in your assignments. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 6 second corinthians chapter 6 now paul speaking there he says we then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Amen. Amen. Every one of us is anointed. I am anointed. You are anointed. I don't, you don't have to be a pastor to be anointed. I'm a pastor, so I'm anointed so I can function in my pastoral role and be effective as a pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. And possibly you are a singer. As a singer, you are an anointed singer. And God has anointed you as a singer so that you can be an effective singer. That when you sing, as a pastor, so I can, I can care for the people. I can have compassion for the people, burden for the people. And when I pray for them, the prayer works. And I'm given ability to teach the word. So when I open the Bible and I read it and I explain it, someone understands it, someone gets blessed. The reason why people understand what I preach and they get blessed is because I'm anointed to, in that role. And if you're a singer and you're anointed, when you sing, people get blessed. People get edified. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone gets moved. Someone gets challenged. Someone 
is moved to rededicate his life to Jesus, somebody will get saved. Because you are an anointed singer. And, and if you are an usher, you, you, you just want to serve as an usher. You are anointed. You are given the grace of God to occupy that office. And, and, and because of you, someone can come to church, sit down, and, and be comfortable. Amen. Amen. And he wants to come back to that church again because I've met this usher. He's so, he's so, he's so friendly. He's, 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 he's so helpful. He helped me to settle down and get blessed. Hallelujah. Uh, you can. But it's possible to have the grace of God and still be failing. And still fail as a pastor. And still fail as, as, um, as a singer. And still fail as an usher. And still fail in our ministry and there are many people that are failing a lot of us here possibly have failed in in the area of our service i pray that if you're failing you stop failing amen. if you fail you stop failing amen. hallelujah amen if you're lacking in some way uh, you'll be revived you know quicken and energize so you can do more amen. But it's possible uh, for workers to be ineffective in their service. And that's why Paul admonishes. He says, I beg you, I beg you, don't receive the grace of God in vain. Hallelujah. Don't receive what? The grace of God in vain. The grace of God in vain. Don't receive the grace of God in vain. In other words, <clears throat> let the anointing of God on your life work. Let the anointing of God on your life you know, be effectual, be effective. Grace is given to you so that your gift will, will show, so that your gift will be fruitful, will be a blessing. The anointing of God is on your life so that you can achieve the purpose why you are assigned a responsibility. And Paul is saying, don't receive it in vain. Hallelujah. Amen. I have to understand how to allow the anointing to work in my life for it for it to work. I have to understand how to make the grace of God uh, work in my life for me to be effective. Are you still with me? Yes. yes sir. Help me say to your neighbor, don't receive the grace of God in vain. Don't receive the grace of God in vain. And, and there are many things that we need to understand, we need to no, no. commit ourselves to in order for yeah. this grace to really yeah. work. For this anointing to, to really work. The anointing needs your cooperation. The grace of God on your life uh, need your cooperation. Amen. Amen. You can be one of the reasons why your church will experience explosion. You can be one of the reasons why your church will be so effective in your community. You can be one of the reasons why people in your church, you know, feel supported. Feel, feel helped because of the roles that you're playing. The ministry of the pastor is very important, but for church ministry, it takes a lot, a lot more than the ministry of the pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. And let me tell you something. When we go to heaven someday and God is rewarding us, you know, it's not going to be based on from who is at the top, right? 
So okay, you are the pastor of, of, of the church. Now take take a million pounds. Uh, you you are only an usher. Uh, take 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 five pounds. You know it's not going to be like that. Let me tell you something. There are some people whose role is very 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 crucial to the success of the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Their role is, I don't want to make it look like more important because all roles that we play in church, they are equally important. You know, the office of the usher is not more, is not less important than the office of the pastor. Wow. Yes, sir. The office of this person who serves in the multimedia and technical in the in the sight of God is as import, equally important as the office of the pastor. There are roles and responsibilities. Amen. Amen. And when we appear before God, he will not be rewarding us based on the names of our responsibilities. He will be rewarding us based on our commitment, based on our impact, based on the level of our sacrifices, based on how we engage, engage. You see, this is because I mean, you don't choose, the Bible says, no man take this honor upon himself, but he that is called of God, even as Aaron. You don't choose to, to, to be, okay, uh, that's, I don't want to confuse you. I'm not preaching my script, because I want to finish very quickly. Amen. Amen. Uh, you, you don't choose in the service of God, you don't choose what you think suits you. You don't choose what you think that's what I like. Amen. Amen. You don't say, well, I, I, I will only be an usher because I just like being an usher. In the service of God, we all have to understand where we fit. You see, we are a body. Some of us are created as the eye to see. The eye cannot see, well, I don't want to see anymore. I just want to be the leg. So I will stop jumping on the street. When you see an eye jumping on the street, you, will, you will run away, right? <laughs> some of us are hands, some of us are legs. Every, no part is insignificant is l l or less important. And you don't choose. That's why every one of us must be able to understand where God wants me to serve. What does God want me to be doing? And so you occupy that role because you understand it's a calling, it's a gift, it's a position given to you by God. God wants me to be faithful as an usher, be faithful as a singer. God wants me to just labor in the area of prayer, praying to make the church succeed in its community. Hallelujah. Now, now because you don't choose, we, you, I mean, we, we, we just discover our assignment, we, we discover our calling, and we engage in that. When we appear before God, God is not going to say, well, because you are the pastor, well, because you are this, he would, because he sees it as a role, a responsibility, a service. And I tell you, when we go to heaven, some ushers will be more honored than their pastors. Some singers will be elevated above their pastors. Some parish pastors will be more honored than their provincial pastors. Because they served differently. Hallelujah. Amen. They serve how? Differently. Differently. They serve differently. Now, the first thing that God wants a worker to do, the first thing is that he will, number one, number one, you want the grace of God to to walk. You want the 
anointing that you carry to, to be effectual. The first thing is, is recognizing that you are a living sacrifice. Say, I'm a living sacrifice. And, and God says that is the most, the most important service that you can give him. Number one, as a worker, as a minister. Romans chapter 2, verse 1. And this is Paul, he always says, I beg you or I beseech you. You know, he's pleading with us. And he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So the first thing that you have to do as a worker is consider yourself as a sacrifice. Hallelujah. If a believer is not first a sacrifice, every other thing that he does is not counted. I tell you that. If you have not fully dedicated yourself to God, putting yourself on his altar and you say, God, I don't own myself anymore. You own me. You have me. You can do with me whatever you want me to do. Whatever you say, I will do. Wherever you say, go, I will go. I am all yours. If you've not seen yourself like that, you're still in full charge, full control of yourself. Every other thing that you do before God. They don't count. Hallelujah. I tell you, I charge you, brethren, present yourselves as a sacrifice to God. Holy and acceptable. Amen. Amen. Dedicate yourself. Say, God, I am all yours. You, you, you have me. Amen. You have me. Whatever you want to do with me, just, just do. If you want me to, to leave my job and do this instead for you, you owe me. You, you. I will do. Oh God, I will do. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, we struggle with God. We struggle with God's own instruction. We struggle to follow the will of God simply because we are still in full control of ourselves. We are full, well, in full charge. But uh, that's the first thing. Self-dedication. Hallelujah. Self-dedication. Can you, can, you, can you just put your hand on your chest and say, Lord, I yield all that I have to you. I dedicate every part of me to you. I put myself on your altar. Take the whole of me. Do with me anything. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to someone? Yes, sir. I'm not preaching, I'm talking to you. That's the first thing to do. Um, and, and, and dedicating our lives to Christ... You know, entails entails a lot. Amen. Entails entails a lot. To be honest, it it it, it, it means that I am hundred percent committed to God. I am hundred percent sold out to God. I am passionate about God. I can do absolutely anything for God. I can lay down anything for God. I can sacrifice anything for God. I am all God's. No 
nothing will be too hard for me to do in the service of God. And anything that will stand on, uh, on the way of my serving God or between me and God, anything that will interfere with my relationship with God, will make me be unacceptable to God. I'm going to be dealing with that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to be dealing with that. And that, that, that's what it means. And for me, as a minister, as a worker, that is the highest calling if I want to be fruitful. The highest thing that I must do. And every day, every day I need to do a soul searching to ensure that between me and God, everything is okay. I cannot pretend. You, 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 you know, we all pretend. We all pretend a lot. Praise the Lord. We all pretend. We all we, we do holier than thou. We, we, when we are not fasting, we show that we are fasting. You know, when we are not holy, there's a way we, we put, put on some garment. We are full of pretense. If God will be opening your eyes now to be seeing all of us, you'll be, you'll be afraid. Now, we all pretend, but the, the thing that we need to understand is that we cannot pretend before God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what the Bible says, the Lord knoweth them that are His. And let them that name it the name of the Lord Depart from iniquity. I can never ever be able to deceive God. And it's Him that I have something to do with. So every day I need to do a self examination, a soul searching to see that it's my relationship with God okay? Is God okay with me? Hallelujah. Amen. Am I where God wants me to be? Am I at that level where God is in harmony with me? You can go about doing whatever you want to do. It does not come before God. It means nothing to God. If in your dealings with God, things are not okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Help me say to your neighbor, you need to make sure everything is okay between you and God. Amen. Speak to the other person on the other side if you can. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the second thing... For me, the second thing, apart from, you know, to, to make the grace of God work for me, to make the anointing flourish, the more the anointing is, is working, is effectual, then I, I see results. I see impact. I see growth. I see progress. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Am I making sense to you? Yes. So to me, it starts with self-dedication, sacrificing of myself. And, and the second thing to me that is important is, is what Paul wrote in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed on me, was not in vain. The grace of God really achieved its purpose for which it was given to me. It, it, it achieved its purpose. Hallelujah. It worked. And then you find a column, a semicolon, and, and, and he explains why the grace works. My English teacher said when you see a semicolon, what follows next is a kind of an explanation to give you a better understanding of what was said earlier. 
So he said, for by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was in me. Now, there's something that you have to do to release grace to work for you. Everybody say labor. 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 In other words, dedicate, shown to service and hard work. Grace of God is frustrated where the people are lazy, where the people are not given to hard work, they're not given to diligence, they're not given to being thorough. And there's so much wastage of the grace of God in our churches. Because we are not given to duty. Hard work. Hallelujah. Hard work. And and uh, not 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 you see. When it comes, some of us understand hard work because when it comes to to what concerns us, uh, when it comes to making money, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Uh, you never say no to that phone call, do you? We're looking for someone to to do this shift. Uh, actually, if you can go now, we'll pay you double. And you just came back from work two hours ago, and you're tired. You know you'll go, right? Hard work. We, when it comes to our personal thing, we, we engage it. We, we work to make money. And it's sad that some people are working and are making money and they're not enjoying it. They're not enjoying it. Some people have died and you think they are poor because they live so poor. But when they open their bank account, they notice him. he worked so hard, but he lived poor. He's never gone on holiday. He's never gone to any shop and, and decorate himself. He has never gone to a good restaurant to eat well. He's working so hard. But he's living so poor. And some of you are like that, that are looking at me. You're working two shifts, three shifts. When it, con when it concerns us, our personal team, you want to be promoted. That's the way you, you work so hard. How many of you Go to your workplace 30 minutes late. Let me see your hand. Why, why won't you do that? Because they will fire you, right? How I many of you just call off sick? Just call off sick. Anytime you want to travel, you just call off sick. You just travel anytime you want to. We, we, when it comes to our own team, you know, we, that's the way we work. But when it comes to the kingdom business, we frustrate the grace of God. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now Paul says, Paul says, I will just try to round up now. Not, I mean, there's nothing I will preach that Pastor Bjorn did not say. She's, she's delivered so well. Paul says, but I labored more abundantly than they all. I pray that one day no one here, are you with me everybody? Yes. I pray that no, no one here one day will stand before God and God will say, you treated my business so shabbily. You did not engage my work with thorough dedication. When the church needed you, you are not available. You can skip church 
You say you are a worker. But you can skip church for weeks and you think it's okay. And you can walk in late and you think it's all right. And you make excuses. And you approach the work so, so callously, so carelessly, so without dedication. The Bible says God is looking for people who are zealous of good works. Hallelujah. Anything short of zealousness, passion, dedication, hard work, thoroughness, diligence, it doesn't impress God. It does not impress God at all. Hallelujah. I charge you this afternoon I charge you this afternoon look at your lives in terms of your relationship with God and make sure that everything is right no hypocrisy you can be hypocrite to me but you cannot be a hypocrite before God he sees you he understands you make sure that every day you do a soul searching and you get it right with God and if you're going to serve God and serve God well, then you've got to approach the service of God with thorough dedication. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. You've got to be dutiful. Mm. Uh, you're not doing this for the pastor. You're not doing this for anybody. You're doing it for the kingdom, for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I know your heads and let's pray together. Father, we just want to thank you. We just want to thank you. We just want to thank you. You've called us to serve. You've called us to serve you as workers. All of us are workers. And we all appear before you as the same. Irrespective of our area of ministry, whether we are pastors, or we are deacons, or we are system pastors, or we are workers, usher singers, before you we are all the same. Call and anointed to serve in our offices. Oh God, may all of us begin to see that we are first responsible to you. We are serving God and not serving man. And anything that will stand on the way, our own way of serving you in the way that you required it, Lord, take the thing out of our lives. Amen. Take the thing out of our way in the name of Jesus. Whatever is contending with anyone here, standing on the way to him realizing his destiny, fulfilling his purpose, I decree that that thing be taken out of the way in the name of Jesus. Where there is coldness, lukewarmness, indifference to the things of God. Take them away in the name of Jesus. Where there is selfishness, self-centeredness, arrogance, worldliness, materialism, such that it's hindering your work. Lord, take them away in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. Lift up your hand to God if you don't mind, please. Lift up your hands. Lord, we all surrender to you. And this afternoon we, ready, we rededicate ourselves to you. Purify us. Refine us with your 
with your fire. Oh God, let what we do in your kingdom be acceptable to you. Amen. Help us to serve you well, Amen. each one of us. Amen. We rededicate ourselves to you. We rededicate ourselves to your service. We rededicate ourselves to your kingdom work. We will not tire. We will not draw back. We are not of them that draw back. We are of them that believe to the saving of the soul. We will not lose heart. No one will be able to plug us out. We have put our hands in the plow. We will not look back. We will serve you all the days of our lives here on earth. Lord, we will dedicate ourselves to you. Now, oh God, Renew our grace. Amen. Renew your grace on our lives. Amen. Now, oh God, anoint each one here afresh Amen. with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let our churches begin to grow. Amen. Let our churches reach out to our community. Amen. Let our churches go on the street and testify about Jesus. Amen. Let our churches expand Amen. and make a difference in this nation. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Teach us to do the work of an evangelist. Amen. Teach us to go and Raise disciples. Amen. Let our churches grow, O oh God. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Amen and amen. You may be seated. If 